Cool. All right, we are back live here. Um, I think we decided for today we're going to go with like another kind of topic based episode. Yeah. Last episode we did just how to generate leads, how to generate business as like an agency owner. Um, I've really enjoyed that episode. I thought that was really cool and got some really good feedback. So I think for this one we're going to speak to kind of all things like news related in the this paid media marketing landscape and how people i guess get their news stay up to date on relevant in industry info i know steve you put together a recent like poll on your linkedin profile there so maybe we could start there with like general results and then we can get into like um our thoughts on those and then maybe like just how you stay up to date on the industry and then same here yeah no for sure let me uh get the screen share going on this but yeah the the ideation on this was to try to better understand uh, how do people stay on top of shit? Uh, you know, there's always so many updates going on, uh, you know, on the SEO side with algorithm updates, paid media. It seems like there's a new fucking widget that pops up in some platform, uh, Daily. et cetera. It's like almost overwhelming. Uh, and so, I, I mean, it's not a lot of people. I wish I had more people respond to this, but I asked, you know, where do you get your digital marketing news? Uh, I gave them four uh, categories here, uh, blogs, social media. So that would be like Twitter, X, LinkedIn, uh, email newsletters and podcasts and webinars. Only 13 people responded. So not a huge sample size to work with, but, uh, blogs got 23%. Social media got 38% tied with that as well as email newsletters at 38% and podcast was at zero. Uh, and so, uh, they only could have selected one as well. So it's kind of like their primary source. So I kind of like that because I think people would have collect everything maybe, but I think, yeah, the really thing that stands out to me. I mean, I get, it's only 13 votes, but nobody selected podcasts or web or webinars. So I know that we talk about news stories <laughs> about what's going on on our podcast for like a, a, an event. And I think it's important. It's, it's, it's fun to talk about. But I don't know if there's a big demand for podcasts and even webinars in that sense of like, here's the daily news of digital marketing. Um, and I think that might be because, I mean, when do you listen to podcasts? Like for me, it's like when I'm running or like I'm in the car on a road trip. Um, I don't want to digest marketing news, work related stuff like while I'm like on my leisure time. Uh, so maybe that's why, like, or, and you don't have time during like the day when you're working to listen to a podcast and work. So that's maybe where I'm, my mind's at, why possibly podcasts are not the, uh, most effective route for learning, uh, digital marketing news. I don't know. I could see that because I listen to podcasts, gym for sure, like running, working out, definitely, um, like a longer drive. If I, uh, if I'm going somewhere and I'm traveling, like just travel in general, great for like, sure. you know, air, like flights and, and stuff. And then like, if I'm ever just like alone, like cooking a meal or something, having like a podcast on in the background. Um, but it's so true. It's like, now that I think about it, all of my podcasts that I listen to are a bit more, I wouldn't say like self-help, but I would say kind of like in like the health space, like I love listening to like, uh, like um, workout podcast or like supplements and health related podcast, like Huberman, Dr. Peter Tia, and then like your standard, like Rogan, where it's just kind of like, you know, like mindless stuff where like you could listen to it it's across a bunch of different topics. I can honestly say, I don't think I listen to any like educational podcast, if you will, like, Hey, here's like a topic that you're going to learn about of like paid media or whatever. I think it's a little bit more casual. Um, I think that's a really interesting insight. Like that's not surprising. Because I also have, I couldn't tell you a single like digital marketing podcast to go out there and listen to other than The Collective. That's the only one I really know of. Yeah, there's another one that's, uh, they got a decent following. Uh, I don't want to give them credit where credit's due. So let me you sent them to me before. I thought they were pretty solid. Yeah, they got a YouTube channel. They have a podcast. Uh, but it's like, it's funny. I see them, I'm subscribed to my YouTube channel, but I don't watch them. But I just make sure like the topic lines. I'm like, oh yeah, I read about that. <laughs> so I'm still up to date. Uh, I want to give them credit for credits too. Let me go pull this up. Uh, Marketing O'Clock. And they've been doing this for a long time. Uh, and they get about, I don't know, a couple thousand views a week on their summaries. And That's well legit. Produced. 
Um, yeah. Really, really, really well produced. Great. I mean, so they get like, you know, 3.5, about 3,000 visitors or views. What's like, on their YouTube. what's like, what's like the last like three videos about? What are their thumbnail titles? Uh, let me go to videos. Yeah, let me see the latest. Um, uh, episode three one six single headline RSS campaign level headlines and more Google Ads updates. Um, and then they do oh, so they're actually get into the weeds of like, hey, here's like yeah. some updates. Yeah, no, I think they're the probably the most relevant like podcast out there for news uh, related to marketing. Um, so. Yeah, that's marketing o'clock. Come and give them a shout out. For Interesting, sure. but uh, I don't know, man. Like I, I don't know if the I don't know. Maybe there are people that obviously there are people that listen to to content that way and, and get news and, and learn. So it's not a, a dead category by any means. But uh, I'm just surprised that there's not more. But I think it's a time and place, right? When you're going to learn about those educational stuff on a podcast. Um, I, like even I, I think some of the, other, the other podcasts that you might listen to that are not health, like maybe they're like entrepreneurial stuff, but it's more about broader concepts, right? And yes. not like specific tactical things of updates that are happening. Um, so maybe that's why podcasts aren't that form or as popular um, for it. So I guess talking about the other mediums, blogs, social media, and email newsletters, um, blogs is where I started out is, but I'm old school, like. It's like, I've been doing this for 16 years. Like this, all we had were websites yeah. to do before Twitter, uh, like to, that would give news, you know, search engine land has been around forever. Search engine Roundtable even longer. Uh, uh, Barry, uh, does an amazing job on, you know, keeping up on the news. And I used to collect a bunch of RSS feeds. If anybody knows what those are and put them into a little dashboard and I'd have a little yep. panel of like, here's all my news stores, kind of like my news headlines. And I would read them every day. Um, and some people would, you know, post daily, maybe ever was every other weeks or whatnot, but now that thing is dead. The only, there's only like two blogs that post consistently, um, you know, the search engine round tables that are out there and the search engine lands, uh, that's pretty much it. Maybe Moz kicks off once a week or two, even, um, even your old agency, they, you know, uh, what was it called? Seer. Um, Seer. You guys were really good about blog posting across the board and that slowed down dramatically. Uh, but it was, you know, I just think that the, where people are putting content has changed. So like even my adaptation of like blogs being the number one spot for learning stuff, it's not necessarily the case. I tend to be more on the email newsletter side of things. Um, Stack Marketer is like more, my favorite, you know, quick, I can scan it and take Same. Minutes, pull out the, the ones that I want. Great um, newsletter. It's Stack Marketer is fantastic. Um, Dude, side note there. Out, while you're on Stack Marketer, I don't know if you uh, if you checked out the recent one. They'll do once a year. Well, they'll put out like their uh, their year in review in their business, and like they'll break things down. Sick. Love how they do that. I don't know if you have you ever checked that out before. I haven't checked it out. I've seen it on there, but I haven't checked it out. I've done it before, and i I have the um I have their most recent one um in a tab that's unopened. I haven't I haven't checked that out. Um, I don't know if I have it's one like their whole handy business here. Model and their profit and et cetera. Yeah. Like they'll literally tell you how much revenue the newsletter brought in, how many team members they have, but they'll do like year over year, like, Hey, like last year we had five team members. Now we're at nine, um, revenue. Um, dude, it's sick. It's like, it's so cool how they break that down. And I thought, uh, I got to pull up one. Maybe that could be a good topic for us to highlight because I think like there's a lot of good insights. Like they're very transparent with like their, their revenue targets, where they get their money from, how they think about like growth for the upcoming year. Like they give a lot away in that. And I think that would be a good, uh, good one for us to dig in on, but couldn't agree more. Yeah. Stacked marketers, like the best newsletter out there for like all things marketing. Yeah. Is there any other ones that you are subscribed to at all? Cause I'm not, and I probably should be maybe, but I, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess you consider the neuron like kind of one that's like an AI, uh, focused, uh, newsletter here. So like, that's kind of marketing ish there, if you will. I read that one daily too. Um, just to like keep tabs on what's going on AI. So like, Oh wow, dude, newsletters are still related. relevant, man. It's amazing. Like this, they're like, growing. This the form of communication on the internet, uh, is email and email newsletters. Is just I don't think it's going them. anywhere. I don't think that's going anywhere. No, I don't think so either. Um, so yeah, I mean, that came out at 38%. So it was quite a bit of people ingesting it 
by newsletters. And I think it's convenient, right? You wake up in the morning, maybe you're starting your day off. It's kind of like how I used to do with the blogs. I can go through that email rather quickly. Um, yep. The one thing I would say for Stack Marketer, they should actually switch up their cadence on where their advertisings are at because I know, hey, the second or third post, that's an ad. Scroll that's through a real fact. quick. Yeah. And then at the very bottom when they have the blurbs, so it's actually the very bottom of the post, I think is actually probably the most, uh, I find the most nuggets in there was kind of like more brief updates, but that first one's always an ad. Uh, I think yesterday or the day before it wasn't, I was like, Oh, Whoa, it wasn't an ad. So that's classic. The, 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 the layout. So I'm not, I'm actually reading some of those ads. Um, but yeah, it's so convenient. Wake up in the morning before I get in my next meetings. Um, you know, I'm typically do the in the morning, kind of see what's going on. I file up some good stuff to, you know, if I find something really good, I'll read it, share it with you guys. I'll put it onto our kind of tracking file for this podcast to talk about potentially. Um, but it's a great way to stay up to date. Like I have, I, if that's the only source I had, I'd probably be okay. I think I'd be okay. Um, for sure. Which is pretty wild. Uh, so you would so say your number we, one, your number one source is newsletters is, is for marketing updates and I hit and stuff. blog on this but it is but like kind of thinking through it it's probably newsletters and uh, yeah it's probably hard to get away from that habit of, of blogs um uh, but i mean maybe you could speak more on the social media like x and and linkedin uh because i don't get my news that way a lot in comparison but i think you have a little bit more experience with x and twitter in that community um etc I would say my number one source, if I had to think about it and like to go to, would probably be like Stacked Marketer for sure, because it's like it's keeping tabs on everything that's going on in the industry. Um, they have a full team that's like checking out all these different uh, um, blogs and websites within the marketing space. So like they kind of do that work for you. So I agree. I would say Stacked Marketer would be like my number one go to. Um, in terms of like marketing updates, I probably actually lean a little bit more towards LinkedIn than like X or Twitter. Um, I guess it's just cause like what I engage with on like X and Twitter skews a little bit differently outside of just like paid marketing and like SEO stuff. I definitely get some of that stuff in my feed, but like LinkedIn is all digital marketing updates. Um, which is interesting speaking through that because a lot of my network, you know, is like other marketers or like trying to connect with CMOs and like, you know, those decision makers and, and, uh, in those companies. So like naturally they're posting a lot about digital marketing and paid media. Like I feel like LinkedIn, a lot of that content is much more professional and marketing and business focused. Um, where like, if there is a big update, like somebody's going to be posting about it, or like if somebody's testing something in marketing, somebody's going to be posting about it. Don't get me wrong. I have some of that stuff on Twitter for sure with some of the people that I follow, but I feel like Twitter tends to be a bit more like real time, uh, I don't know, like news, finance stuff, like workout yeah. stuff and almost, like personal uh, stuff. Yeah, it's personal, right? We're like, yeah. it's not personal. Like, <clears throat> not it's personal. If I do share like a picture of like my family or my dog on LinkedIn or anybody else does, everybody's just kind of like, whoa, whoa, what, wait, I thought this was business only. Um, yeah. And maybe that's where like Twitter X, um, it's like, do you have two accounts? Like maybe one is your, your business profile persona that you're going out. <laughs> and, you know, you're, you're tweeting about and, and you're carrying that persona around because that used to be a thing back in the day um we used to all have like little weird handles at the very like dude 15 years ago it's like when we were coming out doing seo there's everybody had like handles like different names for and sure like, I'm, not a, I'm not a doctor i think ricardo was seo survivor uh <laughs> there's so many different people that are that that's kind of how we got in, interacted on, on linkedin or on twitter and kind of interacted but yep. then i was like dude that's all that's not like my personal stuff that's work related. So I almost like you need two accounts because <laughs> like your feed too. It's like, if you're on like personal mode, you don't want to be looking at a Google update or something like that on the weekend. You're like, oh, shit, no, for sure. <laughs> you know, for sure. See what else is going on. So maybe that's, that's where it's at. So I think most people on Twitter, I don't know if they ever cross over. Like if they're, uh, if they're tweeting about SEO, do they ever talk, personal stuff on Twitter too, or is that profile is just kind of only that, or they've embraced that whole culture of it. And it's, that's who they are. I don't know. It's, it's usually a focused theme, you know, like for that profile, it's usually like, Hey, this is what I talk about. And this is, there's not a lot of like overlap between like paid marketing and then health stuff. And then in like, whatever, it's usually just like one lane. And that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So what about like TikTok or Pinterest or meta Instagram? Facebook? Oh, Reddit. 
I would shout out Reddit. Um, oh, there's some go. fire Reddit threads um, for sure. Reddit is a go-to. I would say Reddit's a go-to just in life in general. If people don't know like Reddit, if you have like a question about like how to handle personal finance stuff or how to do something with like your home, like that you've never done before, like whatever, dude, Reddit has such good information and people are honest on there. And I don't know, cause it seems like a lot of people on Reddit are, are on, um, um, like anonymous accounts where like, you have no idea like what they're like, their handle and like their pictures, like not them. So I don't know if like, that's like a little like shield and protection for people, but you get like the real shit on Reddit and, uh, like actual feedback. I love Reddit. Um, yeah. so I think that's another go-to, but like, I don't have TikTok, so I don't, I don't like scroll through TikTok, and I don't have Pinterest and I call no. me a boomer, but I don't got no TikTok. <laughs> and I have no plans of getting TikTok anytime soon. So. Yeah. And I think Facebook and like Instagram, I I just don't see a place for digital marketing in that space. It's all personal related or hobby. Um, so, you know what though, that like, that would be interesting though, is like, if you like were in this space and like, say like you did want to grow a brand, it might be interesting to do that on like a Facebook, you know, if you just start posting a status every day on Facebook, like, cause I'm sure nobody else is like really doing that. So maybe there's something to be said about a, yeah, I think Facebook though, I did, I, I, you know, I do need to correct myself. The groups is a place that is active on Facebook. Um, yeah. In the marketing community. I know a couple SEO guys that are part of a couple, you know, SEO groups, invite only, et cetera. And they use Facebook to do that. Um, so, yeah. Which I could totally see. Yeah. But yeah I'm sure there's exciting. also. Oh, good. I was just going to say on, on the lines of social, I'm sure there's probably also some people where you could follow where they have like, uh, I don't know, some type of like telegram or Slack group that you can get involved in. Like, I know people do stuff like that there as well. I'm just not like a part of like any or discord channel. Like I'm just not a part of any of those communities to speak to that, but I'm sure there's probably something there. So. Yeah. You know, what's funny that I didn't put in the list here was, uh, conferences. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I feel like webinars kind of hit on that a little bit, but yeah, conferences, I yeah, feel like that would be a good one, but yeah. I don't know. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on conferences, but I feel like conferences is a bunch of nonsense. Like a lot of like the speeches are just kind of like, I don't know. I've never had a great experience going to conferences to be honest with you. Yeah. I would think that, you know, conferences would be good for someone that's maybe a year or two into it. Um, because you're going to be able to see people presenting concepts and ideas that you probably hadn't thought about. Uh, but someone that's experienced, that would be like, you know, speaker level, uh, which a lot of people are now at that experience level. Um, there's no point to go uh, to a conference unless you just want to do social networking and maybe drum up business. It's more like the networking Actually, component to it. Yeah, the more to learn that. I mean, dude, it's all about the party and, you know. Exactly. Uh oh, I see a warning here. Having yeah. communicating with our like somebody ah! recently went to a huge marketing <laughs> um, conference. I want to say it. You, you there? I'm back. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, it there was a little air message uh. that popped up. So. <laughs> we but. are going through. You're good. You're good. You're you're. It's still anybody listening. I'm a. Uh, I'm in like this producer mode here on Riverside and I could see when people's like are uploading and like the mics and all the settings and everything, you're good. You're, you're still uploading here. It's crazy. <laughs> Cause sometimes like Steve will like go completely like blank and it's a fuzzy screen. I can't see anything, but we just like keep it rolling and like yeah. it'll edit and upload in the background. So a little behind the scenes, but one thing that I was going to say is on the conference piece there like somebody went to a, a conference um a couple months ago i want to say it was like a hubspot one um it might have been it might have been a different one um but like one of like the larger conferences multi-day you know thousands and thousands of dollars of booth to set up a booth there um super expensive tickets and like the main speaker was uh was rand fishkin um yeah. big fan of his and he spoke about like dark social and uh, like that whole concept. And this individual was like, oh, it was so good. And like, you know, you should really look into this. And I'm like, 
you know, he's been like tweeting about that and putting out content and Amanda on his team has been putting out content for like two years on that topic there. And uh, that's like why we started our podcast is like that premise of produce more content because zero click is a thing in ads and this could be a good way to generate business. So I'm like, dude, if I would have spent hundreds of dollars on that ticket and that was like the main theme, I'd be kind of like pissed. Like uh, it's not really, but I feel like that there's like almost unrealistic expectations with conferences though, in that sense, because if you're going to spend a lot of money and you're going to travel, like, dude, people are naturally going to be talking about what they tweet about already. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to get some like hidden gem that you wouldn't get anywhere else. Like it, it's, I don't know. I feel like the expectations yeah, might be a little unrealistic I there. I think it's the experience. Um, that's, for sure. That's what you're paying for. And, you know, if you're an agency owner and you're going to fork the bill to help pay for some of your employees to go, just don't look at it as a huge educational thing. It's more of a team building. Uh, for you know, sure. Expense um, to do so. But, um, yeah, I mean, outside of that, other ways that we ingest content, I mean, dude, pfft. I don't know. Uh, sometimes my so, wild card spot is Hacker News on my. It's still my RSS feed, uh, but Hacker News has some interesting threads. Sometimes, not necessarily always marketing relevant, but eh, sometimes they pop up for sure. Um, you know, from a source, but that's how I try to stay. The other and actually doing the work too, right? That's the other thing. Like I guess learning by doing is a huge like mantra. Uh, is actually doing the work and trying it out maybe experimenting yourself. I mean, that's obviously the way that you're going to learn too. I think that's such a good call. And one thing that I was going to say there that's kind of similar is like the blogs. Um, I would say blogs and YouTube, those I will use when there's like a specific use case of like, hey, I'm doing this activity. I got to like upload this new campaign or how how to structure this new campaign or whatever like the task might be. I then find blogs that will like break down that topic step by step, give you screenshots that'll work you through. Those are really helpful or YouTube. But to your point, it's kind of like learning by doing like you're actively like doing something on that account, which then leads you to a blog or YouTube video. Yeah. And AI is not quite there yet on picking up on some of those very specific things, because like, let's say, uh, you know, for example, you want to do like some sort of upload something rather with Google ads the AI has probably not been updated on that update with the interface to know exactly how to guide you. It will, if you try to ask it to do it, like specifically chat GPT, it'll give you guidelines. And sometimes it's pretty close, but if it's something like kind of cutting edge, it's out of date and it's not going to get there specifically for it. Uh, I think eventually AI will get there and replace those blogs you know, maybe not the YouTube side of things because it's actually an instructional video unless they can rebuild it and put it in real time and recreate it. But yeah, I I agree. Blogs and um, blog posts and YouTube videos are great, like tutorial videos to walk through. I think those still have a lot of value to produce um, content and be known for. So for sure. All right. Well, that's how I stay up to date. <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> I think uh, I think anybody listening who's obviously interested in in like this whole marketing space and paid media and organic and stuff, Stack Marketer email newsletter that's a go to for sure. Um, I think that's a no brainer. And then just like following people who you kind of who are in in the industry who you kind of like. And I think over time you can kind of craft your your LinkedIn or Twitter feed to be a bit more towards those people. Cause I know I said, I don't use Twitter a bunch for industry updates, but I do follow a couple key people on there. Um, and that, that's Dude, great. I think it would like, be really cool to have, sorry to interrupt, but, uh, I think it'd be really cool to have like a discord channel of like all of our contacts that we know. Um, uh, and it's just like a single channel and they get to drop a news link in with some like basic context of just sharing. And it's like, okay, well, I can go look and see what's there that the community is pulling, you know? Imagine if we had like 15 people, maybe it was 20, I don't know, that you could just drop a link in and share stuff. Because I think that's also too, like, right? We can crowdsource the funding of like what you're seeing. Sure, maybe a lot of the links are going to be from Stack Marketer. Uh, but if you find something else that it's like you can contribute to the community, I think that'd be really interesting to do. Love that idea. I really like that idea. Um, dude, yeah. I almost feel like there's like a little business there. That like you could so, like for yeah. for example, 
would you pay ten dollars a month to be in a Slack channel with like twenty seven other agency owners and founders and practitioners to understand, hey, this crazy shit just happened in AI generative search, and like this is our thoughts and this is what we're thinking about, and have like real time conversations. I don't know. I would definitely consider it. And I think companies would pay for it. Um, that is an interesting like little a, business. There's model. a couple groups. There's a couple groups out there like that. I've heard of, I don't know them off the top of my mind, but yeah, I think someone's already doing that, but yeah, if there's value, then sure. But I think it'd be cool to see who you invite in. Maybe there's a bit of a screening process too, um, you know, for it. So you're getting more of a senior level opportunity. That'd be interesting. Uh, and there's some uh, moderation that needs to happen. The moderation piece is what would definitely need to have happen there. But that, yeah, you just don't that's wanna, interesting. You just want to post a bunch of content and you're like, dude, okay, this becomes useless now because it's not like super groundbreaking stuff. Um, hmm. That's interesting. interesting though. I think there's something there for sure. All right. Well, maybe we'll have to do it. <laughs> the collective, it's a great name for it too. You know, like it's already, yeah, yeah. we got the branding okay. for it. We could put it out there. That definitely could be something though, for sure. All right. Well, I guess we could close it out on that. That sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I'm trying to think of any, I think we pretty much covered like all the, all the majority of topics here. Um, and I don't know, maybe there's something. We can, we can still have, you know, podcasts that are more about news stories and updates. I think there's still value in just having conversation, even if it's just for social thought or that we cut up and send out. Yes. That's fine. Um, I think that's still very, very relevant to do, but it's just been a slow couple news cycle weeks. Um, I know. Impressed. It moves fast too. Like even if you had a bunch of updates one week and maybe we couldn't meet, that news is old and done. <laughs> On to the next item. Exactly. But so I was, I, I was actually also going to, I was also going to say the same thing. Like I think um, we just also don't have enough episodes to really get like definitive data of like, what works versus what doesn't work topic wise for us. Like, I think if we do this throughout this whole year, we're going to have like a couple episodes where it's topic focus of like, Hey, if you're an agency owner, how to grow your business, we're going to have some episodes where it's like, here's a bunch of updates from this past week. And then we're going to have some episodes where we're going to bring a guest onto the show. And that guest on show could either be more entrepreneurial story of like, Hey, how did you start your agency? And like, how did you get things going? Or it could be kind of what we did with Will Reynolds. And we spoke to him about AI, how their agency is approaching That's AI and topic. incorporating their business. So I'm assuming after this year, we're going to have a better idea of like what type of content like really resonates with people. Um, I think clips on social is always going to be, is going to make a lot of sense of like, here's like a spicy, like portion of that episode that you want to share on social. But I feel like after this year, we'll have a much better idea of like what works and what resonates with an audience based off of like viewership per episode. And then maybe we could just, I don't know, figure something out, like shorten down the episodes or maybe longer episodes or whatever topics. Like I, we'll get some more data this year to have an idea of like how to, how to refine this. Yeah. The hard part, the hardest part is just doing it and being consistent. So that's what we're going to do and we're going to see what happens. So for sure. Hell yeah. Well, if, uh, yeah, as always, if anybody listening has any ideas of like, hey, like I'm, I'm super curious about this topic, you know, had a question here, um, always open to like take in any like, you know, user questions or anything like that or topic suggestions. Um, definitely all years. We're trying to trying to figure this out as we go here. Yeah, love it. Let's hear from people. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, for the time being, I think uh, we'll call it uh, we'll call it there. All things how to how to stay up to date within this marketing world. And then, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch everybody back next week there. All right. Roger.